Hi. I welcome you, all my friends from, from uh, Canada and England. <laughs> Cheryl's yeah. not here from Australia today. We're Palimpsest Live, the International Artist Art Alliance. We're sending pictures around the world, one to each other, so we can scrape and draw back onto these wonderful panels. Like I, my name is Ross in Los Angeles. I send stuff to Denise in, in the Montreal area in Quebec, and she sends it to Stephanie in the Toronto area of Canada, and she sends it to Rose, who's in the west coast of the Vancouver area of Canada, who sends it across the ocean, to Lara Spadetto, who's in the United Kingdom. And uh, like I said, I'm Ross in Los Angeles. And listen, last week we had the most exciting, enlightening kind of conversation about artistic voice. And I just haven't stopped thinking about it since we met last. It was just a really terrific kind of <laughs> conversation. And um, uh, Denise, I know that you're, uh, how do I say it? What's, I know what the verb is. You're, you're either moving towards, you're interested to explore. Interested to explore. Your, your work tends towards figuration right now. You're interested to explore some kind of abstraction there's probably a lot of Venn diagramming going on about the kind of things you'd want to keep and not want to keep. And people, people know and love your work. They come to you to buy your work. How, how are you going to keep your voice in tune with what you've already created? Yeah, that's exactly my problem. Oh, boy. So, yeah, I, um, I've had this urge for a very long time to sort of, because um, my, my, over time, my, my work has become more and more figurative and more and more tiny. I've been using tinier and tinier brushes. And I, more and more, I feel this urge to just, I don't know, stand to, uh, in front of an empty canvas and just throw some paints on there. Mm. <laughs> do something completely opposite to what I usually do. But that's also super scary because like you said, I, I have people who buy my work and uh, how how am I going to make sure that because they, they always tell you when you're a professional artist that you shouldn't do this thing. You shouldn't change your style. You shouldn't switch between you shouldn't have too many different things because that makes you confusing. So hmm. I just decided to do it anyway. <laughs> but I think it's because they want to see a seamless transition, right? Between what you usually do and what you might be starting to do. Yeah, but the thing is, I because I have I, like I told you last week, I went I went through this whole module of figuring out yeah. what I want to do as as my abstract. Because ab, when once you go abstract, there is such a, a, a like a, duh, you can do 500 million things huge right yeah I, I, yeah where do you start where do you fucking start i don't know i don't know well uh -huh. i don't know either so now i have an idea of, of what i want my abstract piece to look like and i gave myself these parameters so i can at least create a body of work that is sort of co cohesive and I, I think it will all ev revolve around texture. And hmm. okay. in, in the contrary to my regular work, which is very like strongly, strong black, strong colors, it will be very like almost, almost just white and very, very light colors because that's what I feel attracted to, hmm. which is weird, right? I don't know how that is going to come out like how it's like how how is this going to stay me i don't know well don't know. it seems yeah, that, that the, your the backgrounds of your work or the, the the grounds that you that you i mean it's a visual ground i don't really know if it's actually the ground that you that you use but they are you do load them with texture and and i don't know if it's a montage or a collage material layers. exactly how you mm -hmm. call layers thank you rose yeah. layers the technical word is layers, and that you would then explore them. And they're all light. They're all white, light, um, mm -hmm. a lot of air, a lot of um, negative space. And negative space. Yeah. Thank you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, they're, and they're, um, they're clearly yours. Mm -hmm. they're, you know, they clear, they clear, you clearly have 
a voice in that way too. So yes, very exciting. Yeah. Well, there, there is going to be, because I've, I've started working on something. Yeah. And there is a, a building of layers where, and, and it's mostly how I'm approaching it is that I'm going from sort of very watery paints to more and more like thicker layers. Right. And, I, and I'm, I'm sort of um, like I started out with uh, like really watery, like where I let the paint flow and, and did some stuff with alcohol and, and, and stuff like that. And then I let oh. that dry and then I put it upright and I made the paint drip down. And then I started glazing over. I started like dry brushing over it and then I started glazing on top of that. And that's where I am at right now. And it's sort of evolving into something where I think I want to add like thicker and thicker layers of paint. And then I also want to add some, like some scratched out, like scratched lines and maybe some, Mm -hmm. some drawn lines with some, um, some crayon type Mm. thing. So are you using different, different uh, technique, different material, or are you experimenting which, in which one you uh, feel more comfortable are you using acrylic uh, yes. ink you said uh, uh, pasta so all together or are you trying to to find which one is uh, the best no I, I i still stay within the acrylic I, I have done some tests to see like which which underlying uh, material i found pleasant to work with like i tried it out on a on a bare wood as opposed to having like a more uh, wider um background first i knew Mm -hmm. i wanted to stay within the acrylic realm mostly but i did really like the texture of a drawn line with a crayon so Mm -hmm. i bought different types of crayons like softer and harder crayons to 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 see if i can make different marks um Mm -hmm. but but there's so much variety what you can do with acrylics now there's so many different mediums that you can use to get at different Mm -hmm. types of textures that i feel that that is still a medium that I really like to, to work with. And it's also a medium that I'm really familiar with. So I feel that if, that I have more freedom there as opposed to starting mm, right. something completely new. So I have a question because um, I went to see you at... Um, uh, artist Project. The Artist Project, sorry. Blank! <laughs> um, and notice that you had one or two pieces that were not quite your usual like you know black and white in the middle yeah. you had already started a transition of your style let's say is your abstract style what you're working on now sort of a tangent like is it is it a takeoff from that style or is in it a, in a way because it's lighter like the, yeah. the the borders i i took away the black borders and replaced them with a completely um well i can show you with this right yes where, where it's Pretty. the bare wood and i'm as opposed right. to having a textured paper i'm using uh, a clear um acrylic gel with a stencil to create these and then i wanted to add more color because i felt i i want i want more color and those are the things that also attract me in doing the abstract stuff so hmm. it is i can i can sort of show you what i'm working on right now it's not yeah. by no means finished and i'm not super duper yeah i wanted to ask but this, i wasn't sure but, but um it is big it is really big it's 48 by 48 inch because i want to work with just large brushes i gave myself wow um, just I, wow. i'm not allowing myself to use anything small <laughs> where do you get those are those are those the japanese brushes like the heiko no, haka, haka brushes, haka brushes? These are Nobel brushes. Nobel. Beautiful. Oh, those are expensive, right? Yes, they are very expensive. You don't want to know how you don't want to know how much I spend on art supplies when I started this project because I bought a bunch of like different like colors that I never used and yeah, thicker yeah. paints that I never <laughs> used color and fancy crayons that I never used. Oh, I've got questions about the crayons. But if you want to know people why They're art nice, is expensive, you know, you've got to consider yeah. the materials that we use are sure. expensive. Expensive. 
That's, that's amazing, very light, Denise. Amazing it thing is that very you're working light. on, Denise. There's, there's some, it, some. I, I started out with a darker or? purple thing that is now sort of layered underneath it. Is that the ink showing through? The alcohol ink? Showing well, through? yeah, no, it's, it's actually it's uh, acrylic ink, but I used alcohol to create different types of dots in it. Oh. Alcohol oh. reacts to uh, to acrylic on a in a in an interesting way. Interesting. So, so yeah, wow. this is what I'm at right now. So that's four feet by four feet. It's weird. It doesn't look that large from here, like from the camera, but I believe you. Let me show it stand next. No, time. I believe you. You don't. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Wow. Now I see. Uh, I didn't realize you were so good. away from it before. That's great. That's pretty large. And I yeah, did great. some some like little circle. I think I want to do something with circles, like circle pattern but i don't know yet right Whoa. i have ideas but it's... so is this in addition to your current like what am i trying to say are you going to be still continuing to create your usual like yes. what you what you what you just showed us right with the wood on the on the outside yeah in addition to your abstract work yes so what i did right now is and that i I schedule my time where I work from from eight to three on my regular work because my regular work is very labor intensive, so it takes a lot of time. And then between three and five, I give myself time to work on something abstract. Hmm. Wow! That's so I put the other stuff away and organized. I and I do this. Also, to just be, because then I, I get the satisfaction of just throwing paint around for, for like two hours. Yeah, no, and for that, sure. And that scratches right? that itch, right? I'm just very, very sort of insecure as to how I'm going to figure out when this is done and um, whether or not I'm ever going to show it to anybody. Yeah. That was very brave <laughs> that you decided to show us your work in process here yeah yes. well i have no idea it's where true. it's going yet i have no clue i'll let you know it's pretty though i like the colors so far i like the gray and pink. Oh. pretty well it's I've scary like because because uh and that's why I actually i pre prepped another panel yesterday of the same size because i started this thing but i want to make sure that i can create a body of work and i'm i don't want to just stick with pink and purple all the time <laughs> right right so so am i going to be able to create something that is consistent within this exploration of something new where i'm not quite sure like my my regular work has such strict parameters that i've set myself that it's really scary right. to 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 start this and not knowing where it's without knowing where it's going and those parameters, I think, are what uh, what create the, the consistency between. Well, all it hands. should do, but yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, that, that 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 you're talking about that freedom that Cheryl brings up, where you're you're sort of removing some of those restrictions to explore something new consciously, yeah. and you need to have more freedom because you don't know what your new parameters are going to be yet. No. Mm. Right. work them out right, right. i mean right. Then, then we touch on that whole what's your voice because that's when as you're working it out that unconscious stuff is at is at play right like we don't get to explore that unconscious stuff until we're doing the process itself yeah right well and the funny thing was when i was going through that uh that module and looking at artwork that i found interesting there were a lot of uh, abstract pieces that had some form of image transfer in them. And th that was really attractive to me. But because mm. I feel strongly that I have to scare myself shitless to do this and, and to, to step completely away from my comfort zone, which completely lies in using the photographic material. So I, I specifically, even though I liked it, I was like, no. We cannot do that because this is not what this is about. Hmm. Because right. if I go no, there, I, I, I'm afraid that I might like yeah. move back yeah. into and something that. that is familiar. And that's, that's not right. the purpose of this exercise 
for me at least. Mm -hmm. Right. It's amazing what we can discover when we step out of our comfort zone. It really is just in all mm -hmm. aspects of life, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's basically what happened to me in 2010 when I um, was rear-ended and I lost the ability to use my hands properly because I, I have a wow. C67 herniated disc. And the immediate after effects of the accident were like lots of pain and numbness and tingling. And I had no grip. I couldn't grip anymore. And um, it was really, really challenging because up to then, my style was pretty tight oil painting that had all the like the old master layers underneath and um, the research and a lot of portraiture what is, was involved so, you know, it was a, um, I mean, I needed a grip to be able to do that with my paintbrush. And um, the, a call for submission went out and I ignored it because I was devastated and I didn't think I could paint again or draw again. And then the curators contacted me and they said, Rose, we were really disappointed that you did, we didn't get a submission from you. And I wrote back and said, why? And they said, you know what? Whatever you can create, we want it in our show. And wow. it was actually the um, our submission, uh, a group show of artists with disabilities that was taking part in conjunction with the Paralympic Games, the 2010 Winter Games here in Vancouver. So it was um, a great opportunity. And when they said they wanted what I was going to do anyways, I kind of did what Stephanie just said. I, I sort of stepped out of my box because I really had no choice. If I wanted to create something, it couldn't be tight and, and detailed anymore. So what I, and though, and I was doing portraiture and I was working with the body and how I felt about my body in the environment. And what I did honestly, guys, was I happened to have a really large roll of paper in my supplies at the time and um i just uh, took off all my clothes and poured paint on my body and i lay down on the paper and i made a body print and then i did pastels and sponge watercolor work into it and i created a whole series that um you know it showed in the um in the in the culture olympiad but beyond that it's shown in other places and it helped me get into the emily carr program and nice. i've sold some of those pieces and it com was completely outside of what i'd ever done before medium wise of everything but i look at it now in hindsight and i think it still carries my voice hmm. great in spite so, of the different medium and everything, there was still that kind of preoccupation with the body in the environment. Right. And and my still my intense chroma of colors. So, you know, sometimes we're forced to find a way outside of our own familiar patterns, you know, right. not just as artists, but as human beings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell me that that you were that you doused yourself in acrylic paint and not oil paint when you did that? Okay. That's yes, good. it was acrylic paint. <laughs> even hard to get out of your hair. <laughs> uh, even with acrylic would be hard to get out of your hair. Yeah, it was, you know, whatever. It was an experiment. <laughs> did you wear a bathing cap? No, I guess not. No, nope, no. Nope. My curly hair was part of the image. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do, do you have well. this documented somewhere, Rose, that we might be able to, to see something at some point? Uh, do I have it documented? Well, I still have some of, of those images. There, some of them are in my portfolio on my website. Oh, I'll go look there. How yeah. exciting. Well, I love that it was like, Stephanie, you were talking about that risk, like the risk that we need to take in order to these 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 changes that we might go through. And, you, and how, Rose, you still solve the problem as yourself. That's why it still carries your voice, right? Yeah. It's like... I think a part of it, Ross, is what you're touching on is that, honestly, my personality I was very determined and I'm always mm -hmm. been I'm an Aries and I am very <laughs> determined just thinking the same ah, thing <laughs> I'm very Aries. very determined ever since I was a child I am a determined human being and I when I was young I was ambitious and when the curators were like we're on board with whatever you're making we would just like to have your contribution it made me feel like 
damn, I'm an artist no matter what. Gee, I'm right. going to figure it out. And if I have to paint with my feet, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I said. That's how I felt. And that's who I am. Mm -hmm. So I think that that really did translate into, okay, how is this artist going to continue making art in spite of these physical challenges? It's because I don't give up. And that's part of my voice. And it sure can. Yeah. I, and I, love, I, I, I see a, that. I know yeah. that about you. I see that in you. That's an amazing kind of um, vignette of, of you. And I love how, how clearly it illustrates for us, you know, the difference between being an artist and being, you know, well, here's my brand and I'm presenting my brand and it's all about my brand. You know, it's like, it's not really, I mean, a brand has a voice, there's brand voice, right? But it's a different, you know, we've all done commercial work of some kind or another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the distillation of, what somebody else is trying to say, the solving the problem part of it, I think that's what I'm really getting at. Like as, a, as in graphic design, design is about solving a problem, a communication mm -hmm. problem. And in this case, it's mm -hmm. like, well, we're not a problem to solve, right? We're a, a person to, ex, to be expressed to in, you know, yeah. like the most transcendent ways that humans can. And if we're good and lucky, some balance of that, somebody else will see it and feel something. Uh, may I ask yeah. uh, something to Denise uh, related uh, to this uh, experimentation? Because uh, you said that you bought uh, the, this big uh, panel, uh, and but ha have you um, tried before, like in a small panel, or just uh, you? No, I, I specifically, I specifically <laughs> chose to start on a really, really large panel because I had bought the big brushes and because I wanted to be able to, like my work is always so much like this, that I wanted no, it to um, be like yeah. this. No, no, I, I, I can understand what you mean, but I what uh, my question was uh, related to the technique, maybe uh, to understand um, how to use the, the charcoal, for example. I did. And, um, <laughs> Have you done some tests before? Uh, yeah. Okay. I did. Yeah. I, but these are yeah. the only two. These are the only ones. And it was just <laughs> to test okay, literally the which, oh, which yeah. ground oh, I wanted to use and whether or not I wanted to use a texture underneath my um, my water layer, my first layer. Yeah. That was the only test that I did. Yeah. Oh. Talk about risk. Wow. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah, it's right on. And wait, you bought the brushes like before you before you decided to paint huge like this? You got these huge brushes and I, then you decided you're gonna get this giant thing? No, no, no. I bought them all at the same time. Okay. Like <laughs> I you just have spent the thought, a shitload of money. Big, I need bigger brushes. I think a lot of people <laughs> don't realize like if you paint if you're used to working small, you know, your scale your the scale that you're working at also needs to scale up when you scale up, right? Yeah. You need well, a bigger yeah, brush. Because to make the same type of gestural mark larger. Just to, to give you right. an idea, this is what I usually work with. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to a five inch brush. Wow. So out of curiosity, Denise, just for my own curiosity, how much did the five inch Nobel cost you? I think these are about 30, or... $35. Oh, okay. Oh, $35, Each? not so bad. I thought they were more expensive than that. I, I thought I saw some that were like 100. No, 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 these were around 30 to 50 dollars ah. okay thank you Each. taking and now I have a question too what about the the crayons you're you're oh, using yeah. and you were talking about different hardnesses of crayons which i've never heard of that they, these are super cool i i found them i was very excited about them are they They're, wax based and are they wax yeah yes <laughs> they are the wax it's like a bunch of artists hearing about yeah. a new material oh, oh <laughs> i know i know so i i started well they didn't have black ones so i bought some regular like uh, black and gray and white ones well, are they Caran dash? these are uh yeah these are Caran dash. So these are dash. Hard. Okay. okay yeah but these are um sennelier and these are soft oh are they water soluble oh, yeah. No, they're they're uh, they're oil pastels. They're oil pastels. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. So yeah, I bought it. The wax is water soluble. But then I found these. <gasps> What's that? Is that an oil crayon too? Yes, they're the same. They're the uh, same oh, brand. Oh, wow. bigger. Wow. 
But they're Sennelier. They're, Sennelier is a really nice brand. I have the soft pastels. Yeah, these these are they are oil pastels, but see they're 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 almost crumbly. They're super soft. Yeah. And they're yeah. they're they're pigment heavy usually. Yes, very pigment heavy. So yeah. So, so I'm, that's I'm for excited. on top of the acrylic, right? Obviously. You yes. Don't, you that's the idea that. anyway. Yeah. yeah so he, how, you, so now you won't have the ability to 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 move back with acrylic paint over the oil pastel? No. No. Because it won't here, right? So Not really. Right. No. It'll, it'll okay. will repel it'll it. Bead. It'll it'll repel it. Yeah, it will yeah. repel it. Yeah. It's a, it's a texture it's you can get by doing that on purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By putting so, the water over the oil, it will repel it in certain areas and yeah. then it gives you that kind of uh, it has an edge around the, the where the water has dried. It's mm -hmm. kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll be playing around with that too because I, I used to like that as uh, doing that when I was younger. But yeah. right now, yeah. I first uh, want to add some more white, and then I want to add my dots, and then I have bought some um, modeling paste because I, I have seen some artwork that had these really really prestige big brush strokes that I really liked. So Oh yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So modeling paste is basically just a very, very thick gel medium, right? Yes. Just make it yeah, this right. I have that too. Yeah. 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 I was thinking for some reason I was thinking plasticine, but it's not modeling paste. No. It's a different kind of modeling paste, I guess. But that's why I yeah. chose to work on a board as opposed to a canvas, because up until this point it could have been done on a canvas. But because I want to have, do like the really, really like thick paints on you top see. of it. Mm. Yeah. It, it's oh, better cool. to be on a, on a... I don't know it's yet. Exciting. It's going to be cool. Bit more up. Yeah. yeah. It'll it makes me happy, up. though. I mean, I mm. worked on this yesterday. Funny side note. Normally when I paint, I, will, I listen to podcasts. When I was doing this, I had to listen to music. I couldn't listen to podcasts, mm. which was weird. Ah, interesting. Interesting yeah. that you have no people in that painting and that... You were listening to music, but that when you were on your, you know, doing your other style where there are people and there's it's like an urban setting, yeah. you wanted to listen to podcasts. It's mm. interesting. That mm. was weird. But yeah, it made me really, really happy. And I'm sort of, since I've been working on this, I'm, I'm sort of giddily excited about it, which I guess is cool. good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm still sort of insecure. It's inspiring, about everything, actually. But... I'm inspired by this. this it's great. I feel very inspired, but I'm still not quite sure whether it's a good idea or not. But hey, we're, we've embarked on this journey now, so <laughs> what the hell? It's a good yeah. idea. Right. You won't know till you go, right? No. Yeah. What did you say, Lara? No, definitely it's a good idea because uh, whatever uh, you are uh, learning something, uh, experimenting, uh, you're learning about you, so it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a good enough idea to show it to the rest of the world, though. <laughs> I think once you develop a body of work, it will be. Yeah. I have a, I have actually a meeting with a, an, an art coach this Friday online to basically determine the direction of my art because I'm, I, you know, I have to admit I'm a little lost with it. <laughs> That's why I want to talk to you guys after this, just to, you know, to ask you. I, I think brain. it's normal sometimes so to to feel lost. Uh, to yeah. Get lost. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's and I think it has to do with this whole transition of me work, like starting to work part time and like liking that the money, but then like I'm missing the art. So it's just it's really I have to arrive at some kind of a weird yeah. or some kind of balance, right? Yeah. That's what I did in twenty seventeen. I I um paid an art consultant to give me some feedback and that's when I was like frozen in my tracks because of the yeah. <laughs> feedback. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So like be careful rainstorm. with the art consultant because Honestly, it was like, that's when I put my painting away that I rediscovered recently. And I was looking at it thinking, why did I listen to that person? <laughs> Wait, you got stuck after the art coaching? You got stuck from there? Oh, yeah. She, she was oh. brutal. Oh. She was oh. insensitive. And to be perfectly honest, something happened during the consultation that kind of took me aback, which was she pulled up examples of one of the artists she was working with the work they were doing that she thought i should go more in that direction of yeah and it was a absolute copy of an inuit artist's work at 
unnamed Inuit artist work that I had represented in the 80s. And I didn't hmm. say anything. I just sort of stood there with my mouth open, shocked that a contemporary Canadian artist was getting traction with imagery that was literally, if they weren't conscious wow. of it, they should have done enough research, especially with an art consultant helping them with their career. Oh, boy, that's a mess. And I, I just, it kind of froze me because I didn't know what to say because I'm older, right? I'm that much older that I, I handled that artwork in the 80s. Right. Um, and it was like that many in 2017. And this is the advice I was being given. I was paying for that kind of advice. And I just was kind of like, I, I was taken aback. I, I really didn't know what wow. to do. Yeah, Rose, what I did get from it was that she didn't think what I was doing had any merit. Rose, maybe maybe the thing that, you know, you, you, you froze and you're dumbfounded and maybe the thing that should have come out of you was you're fired and then you would have well, been... Well, like, appropriation of someone else's artwork. Right, right? Yeah. and you knew. Wow. So, wow. Absolute, complete. That's what Indigenous artists are in up in arms about that their work is completely appropriated by non-Indigenous artists, and those artists are getting money for it. Nice. When the Indigenous artists, the original Inuit artists, we were repping their art, but they were part of a collective up in the in the in 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 Nuvik. And and it was a part of a collective where they didn't even have their names signed to the individual mm. pieces. Mm. We'll have to do we'll have to do a discussion in the future more about appropriations and cultural mm -hmm. artifacts and all that that's a definitely feel to be mine but i want to yeah. see your studio rose yes. you made a recording that we can check out yes i did a little video how exciting so, um okay let's see if i can figure out how to do this someone has to pin me i think i pinned so i don't think no I'll... me no so i, don't I, think will... I tried pinning it didn't yeah. it has to be me do i yeah. pin Okay, no, no, I'm gonna no, pin you, my you just share your screen. And then I'm gonna just uh hang on, hang on, hang on. Forgive me. I am a little bit uh slow here. All right, there we go. I All tried right. to pin it before and it just it didn't work. It made it oh, smaller. There, but... oh, oh no, go. it's showing me. I'm gonna no, unpin no. me. You're good. No, 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 no. No, you're good. Yep, it's it's running. Unpin yourself, but now we can see it. Yeah. Okay, can you see it? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. This is Parker Street. This is the oh, building across the street they just built because everything's being developed around us. Uh, okay. There's um, up at the top, you see a white sculpture. That's by Kari Christensen, the um, printmaker. And her oh. oh, nice. It's what welcomes people to the building. So I just put Very a nice. scroll there so you could see it better. And there's um, a picture of our, our wonderful manager, Andrew, and some of the signs that there's quite a number of studios in this building. There's over 70 studios and most of them are shared. So there's a lot of artists in our over a hundred and some odd year building. Parker Street was a mattress company back in the day. Ah. So we actually have a documentary that was shot about the building because um, for Vancouver, it's considered really old. <laughs> Mind you, I uh, come from Montreal, so it's not that old. <laughs> yeah, true. But it's old for Vancouver. So there's our directory. Right. So this is the second floor of Parker Street. Two there I nine. am amongst all my other wonderful colleagues. That's Babylon Buttons, and um, she's been there for years. David's in that space. Now, when I first moved into Parker Street, this floor was almost all woodworkers. My colleague James of Red Star creates the most wonderful custom furniture you'll ever see. And he's been there for a long time. And uh, yeah, as I said, it was a woodworker's paradise when I was first there. It was very noisy with lots and lots of sawdust. Yeah, but, sure. <laughs> um, a lot more um, painters. So this is um, one of the studios that um, people come and learn how to paint there. At the end, there's five left. You can see he works with leather and he's very well known for his leather work. So it's quite a diverse uh, group of people in the building. 
Although um, right now we are painters. So there's the door to my space. Oh, well. Welcome to my studio. Very nice. My floors nice. are old. Oh, there's my number That's one. So well. <laughs> yeah, well, very nice. I can't work without him. Actually, the building is dog friendly. So there have been many, many dogs in our building over the years. And everybody gets to know everybody else's doggies. And this is my messy studio. That's some of my botanical printing stuff that didn't sell. Very nice. There, forlornly. Wishing oh, it was sold. There's my law. Oh, there's your, yeah. So I have uh, all my unsold stuff stuck up there. There's my very important fridge, uh, my easel, and my messy, messy stuff <laughs> that makes all the stuff happen. That's the piece that I refound and I'm working on. Hmm. And this is very unlike Lara's table. My table's messy at all times, <laughs> even when I've tidied it. And um, I have some of the tracings that I use to transfer images from um, mm -hmm. from my imagination or from a uh, photo or whatever I'm working with. I use an old-fashioned technique of tracing paper. This is mm -hmm. the book that I my work was published in that I'm so proud of. It's about mm -hmm. uh, natural oh. dyes. And I was congratulations. There you are. I was on the same page with Irit Dillman and Jane Dunwald, who are absolute masters in botanical printing. So I feel so honored to be on the same page. Congratulations. Yes. And then we always end with cobalt. So <laughs> there's my <laughs> life. You know, my ancient Very nice. Floor. Yeah. It doesn't even look like I painted that floor, but I painted that floor many times. <laughs> Such a nice oh, space. Wow. A beautiful space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. It's um, it's my sanctuary. Thank you for very much a sanctuary, and I'm very, very blessed and grateful. How, how long have you been working in that space? Twenty five years. Wow. Wow. <sighs> yeah, twenty five years. Imagine, eh? Yeah, really. Do you find that your your sense of artistic self kicks in. I mean, we're talking about artistic voice and stuff like that. Do you find like you're, when you walk into the space, you have a, a stronger artistic presence to let your voice out? Not just because of the work, I mean, actually in, in coming into the space, say, rather than, you know, being at home or taking a walk or something. Yes, I feel embraced. I feel embraced by um, even just being in a building that's, I'm surrounded by other creative individuals and pursuing their passions and their uh, dreams. I mean, over the years, I've been there so long that I've had so many different people above and below and around me. Like for the last couple of years, I've had a sculptor who gets very heavy rocks and thumps and bumps and bangs my, <laughs> my ceiling. I mean, quite a lot. Sometimes I'm like, oh, get it over with. But obviously they have to break them up into smaller pieces at some point. Oh so, But a couple of years ago, I was painting in my space feeling very safe and um i was there it was late it was after regular hours and i was in so in the flow i thought i was hearing music in my own mind and then i realized that there was beautiful violin music floating up from below me nice and for uh, quite some time i had a professional violin player using it as their studio to practice mm. below me so i was just taken off into this wonderful musical place while I was painting, which I thought was such a privilege. So mm -hmm. being in a space I, that is full of other creatives actually does, for me, create this kind of em embracing, um, comfortable feeling when I'm going in there to be making art. I feel like it's this is the place to make art and it doesn't have to be anything specific, if you know what I mean. It just has to be creative. Mm. Right. Nice. Oh, thank you, Rose. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love seeing into all of our worlds. This is just, I don't know, it's just getting me all excited too. It's <laughs> wonderful. Oh, hello. Someone's calling. <laughs> Anybody doing anything? It's old fashioned. Old fashioned. It's anything old fashioned. Uh, interesting <laughs> that they want to tell everybody about? Uh... I guess was, you were, you were um, presenting uh, at a, was it a gallery? Last week you announced something and I don't know if that had happened yet. Yeah, June 10th is the Parker June Arts 10th. Lodge. 
So I'm not sure when we were airing this, but yes, June 10th, come to the Parker Art Salon. You can look it up online. Oh, so now this is all the people that are in that in your Parker Studio building. Everyone who wants to take part uh -huh. will have their studios open and actually will have hanging work in the halls. So it's going to wow. be a vibe. Wow. And um, we're also doing a group show at the Pendulum Gallery downtown Vancouver. Oh, that's great. Well, I think I think um, we'll just have to get together again next week and continue these discussions about artistic voice, especially um, this question that Stephanie had had pointed out before. What does your art say about you? I think this is another piece that we can add to the questions we ask ourselves. You know, why am I doing the story we tell? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And, you know, what what does my art say about me? Mm. I don't know. Let's find out. Yep. <laughs> Come back next week. We'll have some more deep dive discussions and maybe we'll open some boxes. Maybe some boxes will have gotten unlost. <laughs> Otherwise known as found. It's found. Find your voice. Okay. Love seeing you guys. Thanks for thanks yeah, for being here. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye everyone.